You ever hurt yourself and wanted to say, mother Hi, I'm Matt, and this is Simply Psych. So I said it was probably because of your mother. <laughs> when you think of psychology, what name comes to mind? Probably this guy. That's because Freud was one of the most influential figures in psychology. And he came up with a theory to explain how the mind influences the way that we behave. Which then explains why sometimes we feel like we want to swear and we don't. Let's get into this. We're talking about Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud was one of the most influential figures in psychology. And his theories were extremely important to our understanding of psychology today. Now they have largely been discredited, probably because he talked about sex so much and he did way too much cocaine. But they were still extremely influential. Freud's theory of psychodynamics proposes that we have a part of our mind of which we are largely unaware. He called it the unconscious. The unconscious contains all of the things in our mind that we may not be aware of and yet they are influencing our behavior. They're influencing our speech. They're influencing pretty much everything that we do on a regular basis. Now the conscious is a smaller part of our mind that contains all the things that we are aware of, that where we're making choices about how we want to behave. The unconscious is a very large part. It's kind of like an iceberg. What do we know about an iceberg? An iceberg is really only 10% above the water and about 90% below the water. So the largest part of the iceberg is beneath the water, but we only see a very small part. This is very much like the mind. We see a very small part, which is the conscious, but then the larger part of the mind is the unconscious. And in there is contained all of the influences and motivations that motivate us in the way that we want to behave. Now, Freud was a structuralist. What that means is, is he believed that the mind was divided up into different components. And he said that there were three primary components in the mind, the id, the ego, and the superego. Now, these three components interact with one another, and as they interact with one another, they then influence the way that we behave. Let's start with an understanding of the id. Freud said that in a healthy person, the id would be the largest part of the mind, the largest part motivating our behavior. Now, Freud believed in evolution, and he believed that we, as humans, come from animals. And animals have a lot of instincts, specifically the survival instinct. And the id contains that survival instinct in humans, and it motivates our behavior. The id is very much based upon what he called the pleasure principle. When you look at animals, when you look at a dog, what is it that they do? They eat, they sleep, they fight and they wrestle sometimes, they have sex. So those are things that are pleasurable to an animal. Well, because humans, according to Freud, come from animals, then we have those same instincts, those same motivations in life. And those motivations are contained within the id. All we want to do is seek out pleasure in life. Now, another part of the mind, the superego, contains all of society's ideals. As we're raised, our parents, our teachers, our pastors, or whatever, all of those individuals, they teach us how to behave in society. And in order to live in society, we must be civil. This is where the word civilization comes from. In order to be civil, in order to have a civilization, we have to have rules. We have to have limitations. We have to have ways in which most people behave so that civilization can actually exist. All of that teaching is ingrained in our unconscious mind in the superego. Now here's something very interesting about the id and the superego. They are in conflict with one another. The id wants to have pleasure, unadulterated pleasure, all the time. The superego, however, the superego wants to enforce the rules. Well, as you can expect, these two things are at odds with one another. This conflict, or this interaction between the id and the superego, influences how we behave. Take swearing, for instance. Swearing is not always socially acceptable. Sometimes, if you're not around your parents, maybe it's okay to swear. Other times, if you are around your parents, you may not want to swear. We took a camera and decided to follow my assistant Simmons around to see what would happen. Everyone knows he has a dirty mouth. And we wanted to find out if we could catch this on tape and see exactly how the interaction between his id and superego takes place.
that? Is this the inside of my mind? Swear, you know you want to. I wouldn't do that. Don't listen to him, say it. He's right, swearing is f***ing fun. Whoa! That mother So it looks like the id won that round. But let's see what happens if the superego wins. That Where am I? Swearing is wrong. Don't listen to him. Feels good. But could offend someone. He's right. Not this time. <sighs> Go away. <laughs> that man must have been in a hurry. Thank you, Simmons. So like the little devil and like the little angel, the superego and the id are in conflict with one another. But we still have a third component of the mind. Freud called this the ego. The ego's job was to manage the relationship between the id and the superego, meaning that the ego was there to make sure that the id felt the pleasure that it wants to feel, but also follows the rules so it can still be part of civilization. If you have a strong ego, you have a healthy person. If you have a weak ego, then the id and the superego fight with one another and it can develop unhealthy behaviors. The ego is based upon what Freud called the reality principle, that it assesses reality, the reality of your situation, and then makes a decision based on the circumstances. So if you're by yourself and you wanna swear, your ego says, it's okay, you go on and swear and feed your id. But if you're around other people that may not appreciate your swearing, your ego says, okay, superego, I hear the rules, I'll go ahead and not swear. The important thing to remember about Freud's theory of psychodynamics is that though the id and the superego are unconscious and the largest part of the mind, the ego is conscious and therefore has the final say in exactly what kind of behavior you're going to show in any given situation. So, swear away, or don't, it's your decision. Let's take a seat. Freud is the most influential figure in psychology, primarily because everyone who came after him was reacting to him. Now that is the ultimate legacy, and why I keep a picture of him here on my desk to remind myself just how f***ing far we've come. Till next time. Have you ever hurt yourself and said frack? Flim flam fadoosh, schlegel, mother pheasant plucker to remind myself just how fracking far we've come. That mother, father, son of a biscuit. Gah! Ant hills. Gah. Have you ever hurt yourself and wanted to say, <laughs> I had a different one in mind.